Okay, the Clippers have always been the illegitimate child in L.A. If you have a daddy who's married to your mom, but your dad had other kids from other women, but you don't really know those kids. You see them every now and then, but you're not going to any of their monumental moments in life, and they are not coming to any of yours. You won't see them in any family reunions, and your biological mother is not playing stepmama to your daddy's other children. That, that, is, that the Los Angeles is the Los Angeles. Los Angeles. Happy day, happy day, the Clippers lose. As a Laker fan, I'm excited because y'all are gone. But as a basketball fan, we got to keep it moving. So instead of going off of, instead of talking smack this whole video, how the Clippers were the best team and they were going to win it all, let's just move on. I got four different trades that the Clippers might be able to use to either get back on track or rebuild. Let's go. If you'd like to see more of me doing these types of videos, I'm going down the list of teams and make trades to make them better. Let me know. Subscribe so you can see more of them. Comment down below. Number one, Bradley Beal. Bradley Beal has had his talents wasted coming to the Wizards, and honestly, he's been needing to find a new team for years. I wanted him to come to the Lakers. He didn't go. He was determined to stay for the Wizards, but if he wants to win, he needs to move. Him coming to the Clippers will give the Clippers a bona fide score in the starting lineup. Where you have Pandemic P, who wants to play when he likes to. He might be successful in the season, but come to the postseason, well, we know how that works. Imagine having a starting lineup of Patrick Beverly, Bradley Beal, Kawhi, Montrez if they keep him, and Zubak. That sounds like a scary lineup. Kawhi gets defending done, Bradley gets the offensive done, and as long as they side a good uh, defensive forward, I think that'd be a sweet deal for the Clippers. For the Wizards side, they're still getting themselves an all-star to pair next to John Wall. Both of them play a little bit different position. Uh, you still have Thomas Bryant there as well, and depending on how Paul George likes it, he can either become the star that John Wall was supposed to be there and really help the Wizards in the East, or he can leave after the year is done. It's up to him, of course, but it's a new place for him to really show that he can still be great, and he's going back to the weaker East. Number two, Joel Embiid. Let's be honest, Philly has a choice to make. Do they go all in on Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid, trust the process, or will they separate the two? Many people that I've talked to have said they'd rather keep Simmons. I'd like to argue against that. I think Embiid will be much better going forward as a dominant big man. But hey, this trade's about trading Embiid. I would do, again, another straight up trade, Embiid for Paul George. I think the clip should follow the Lakers formula. Have a dominant guard slash forward and have a dominant big man. Kobe Shaq, Kobe Powell, LeBron AD, and the clips can go Kawhi and Embiid. Embiid is a jokester, loves the lime life. You already know he loved it in Philly. He would also love it being in LA. He's a little bit of a, a prima donna, and he loves to show off a lot. He would love the lights coming to the Clipper Town. I think that'd be a good match for them. You also still keep Zubak off the bench, so no matter what big man you have at the time, you have someone that you can trust and not worry if you put him in. For Philly, Philly still keeps a very talented Paul George, and now that the paint isn't as clogged in, Ben Simmons cannot drive like he wants while he's still developing his three. Uh, you still have a relatively successful team around them, and when they get this new coach, whoever that may be, maybe the offense will be able to run a lot better, considering Ben Simmons and Embiid haven't really worked out in everybody's eyes. These next two trades are going to be the blow-up trades, where they realize it's probably not going to work with the two superstars, so we gotta get rid of one. Of course, you're not getting rid of Kawhi, so you get rid of Paul George. In trade one, I have Paul George going to the Knicks along with Sweet Lou for Julius Randle, Taj Gibson, Alfred Payton, Frank, and Frank Nilakina. Realistically speaking, you keep Randle, you use Frank, Alfred for trade assets. Depending on how the season goes, you get rid of Taj Gibson as well. Lou Will hasn't been the same since he went to Wayne's in Magic City. Paul George will be able to be the superstar that he rightfully wants to in New York. 
and the Clippers will at least get one talented power forward to replace Montrezl Harrell. Frank Nielakina, of course, never really uh, had a good start in New York. Could be better at the Clipper. Who knows? Of a Payton's kind of a, a throw-in, along with Taj Gibson as the vet, just to make the salaries work. This would also show Nick fans that they are trying as they get at least an all-star with Paul George. And with the cap room that the Knicks typically have, they'll be at least to be able to sign maybe one more person. The last trade comes at a bit of a surprise, considering it deals with the Orlando Magic. The Clippers trade Paul George, Patrick Beverly, for Aaron Gordon, Terrence Ross, and Markel Fultz. Aaron Gordon, as we know, it never worked out for him in Orlando. He wasn't getting the stats people thought he would. They weren't getting over anyone in the playoffs like they thought he would. Terrence Ross has always been a good scorer, so he'd be solid whether he starts comes off the bench. And Markel Fultz has really emerged as a great point guard. Now, whether Orlando would be willing to give Markel Fultz up is another question. I don't believe it'll be the easiest trade, but considering they are getting Paul George, but like that would be a key factor. They still have other players on their team, such as Yusevic, Mo Bamba's coming and emerging, and you also have Jonathan Isaac as well. Who could, he could really help get into the position that Orlando would like to be. Whew, that was a lot to go through. If you liked what you saw, disagree with what you saw, and want me to know, put in the comments down below. Otherwise, I'm going to try to keep doing these more. Adios, my hoopers. Until next time.